Hey everybody, Mark Fox here with Amazing Prophecies YouTube channel, Forever Free Ministries, coming to you from Texas. Breaking, America is on fire in the West. Hellish fires rage on in Oregon, Washington, and California. And according to the experts, this is caused by global warming, climate change, which means in terms of the foreseeable future, it's going to get worse. The fires are not only record breaking, but they're heart breaking, heart rending. Are these monster historic apocalyptic fires harbingers, warnings of things to come, that and more? We will be taking a look at Bible prophecies. You don't want to miss this. Stay tuned. Okay, everybody, just before I dive into this very, very current topic, a Bible prophecy topic, I want to get this book into your hands, Mark of the Beast. Thousands of you have requested this free book. We can get it to you in ebook, no problem. Look at the graphic here, We're going onto the screen here. And uh, we can, all you need to do is click on the link below to get this free book. Like I say, thousands of you have already received this book. A donation is greatly appreciated, guys. Very appreciated at this time, but not required. So make sure you uh, check the, click on the link below and you'll be able to get this. Also, if you want, you can text Bible to 74121. You can give us your prayer requests. Now this is for the United States in terms of texting. Free online Bible study course, a link to a Bible prophecy, Sabbath keeping church near you text alerts, and much more. All you got to do, text Bible to 74121. Or you can call us with prayer requests, Bible questions, or you, you just need prayer, 833-211-4878. And our staff can accommodate you. You can email us from around the world, amazingprophecies at gmail.com. Would you like us to give a link to a Sabbath-keeping church near you? Do you have prayer requests? Whatever it is, amazingprophecies at gmail.com. Also, I want to give a shout out to Bible Prophecy Made Clear uh, by Jared Bowling. You want to go there and subscribe. Also, my good friend Kemi Oopman uh, has a channel called Unlocking Bible Prophecies. Go there and subscribe to Kemi's channel. I know you'll enjoy it. America is on fire. Fires are raging and blazing there in the West. The West Coast wildfires continue to burn millions of acres. As a matter of fact, about 5 million acres. As wildfires rage, climate experts warn the future we were worried about is here. Five, this is amazing. Five of the largest wildfires in California history are currently active. So out of all of these different major fire uh, events that they've had there in California, the top, the, out of the top 10, five of them, five of the largest wildfires in California are currently on fire as we go to broadcast here tonight. Matter of fact, you can type in Google search in news and just type in fires Armageddon. Sure enough, there you see Armageddon like fury like fire and fury torching West Coast. It was like Armageddon, families devastated after losing uh, probably their house there. Sudden fire evacuations in Detroit leave families in limbo. It feels like Armageddon. Yes, Armageddon is a term that is used like orange skies captured over Davenport amid lightning complex fire. Or you can type in Fire is apocalyptic, another term that is being used to characterize and depict what's going on right now in the West. The most apocalyptic photos from the West Coast fires this week. CNBC, at least 33 dead, actually by now it's 36, as wildfires scorch millions of acres uh, Western U.S., it is apocalyptic. And so there you see the term apocalyptic being used. So Fox News, California firefighters face wall of flames in dramatic video, 250 Marines, sailors to Battle Creek Fire. So the Creek Fire has burned 228,000 acres and is only 18% contained as of just a couple days ago. Now, 
California wildfires from 2011 to 2020, the acreage burned by wildfires has increased drastically in the last 10 years. More acres, listen everybody, more acres have burned this year in California than ever before. Now more than ever, you should plan, prepare, and stay aware. Learn more by visiting this uh, uh, website there. So I want you to notice here, 2020 is just breaking, smashing records, and the fires just keep raging. This year's fires have taxed the human, mechanical, and financial resources of the nation's wildfire fighting forces to a degree that few past blazes did. And half of the fires uh, season is yet to come. Did you hear that? Half of the fire season is yet to come. This is very, very dangerous indeed. Dangerous times. And there are 18,500 firefighters that are fighting these blazes. And uh, you can see here a chart from Fox News, current large wildfires burning across the West. Matter of fact, we have a Bible Prophecy Crusade seminar coming up October 9 to October 31st in Idaho, Sandpoint, Idaho. So if you're there in Idaho or Washington or Montana or Oregon, you may want to come. We're going to be there at the Adventist Church Auditorium, October 9 to October 31st. First, so I hope you can make it. Email me, text me, call me. We can give you more information about that free Bible seminar that I will be presenting in person there in Sandpoint, Idaho. So critical fire conditions also continue for parts of Oregon, Northern California, and the Great Basin. As you can see here, the wildfire danger. Now, this chart is absolutely appalling. Poor air quality and smoke are still widespread across the region, stretching into the central U.S. and even into the northeast of New York and New Jersey. So smoke from the ongoing wildfires in the west will continue to drift eastward. And so uh, CNBC, these charts show how wildfires are getting larger and more severe in the United States of America. Here you see a picture of red fire uh, retarded uh, blankets burned residences and vehicles in the aftermath of the Almeda fire in Talent, uh, Oregon. And so the U.S. is about halfway through the 2020 wildfire seasons, but historic blazes in California, Oregon, and Washington have already decimated millions of acres, destroyed entire, I mean, just totally bombed, as it looks like just have been bombed, destroyed entire communities and caused what could be hundreds of billions of dollars in damage. While fire season has always been present in the West, human-caused climate change, as they're saying, has made fires more frequent and destructive and fueled extreme drought conditions that allow for quicker spread. This season, record-setting blazes have inundated states in smoke and some of the worst air quality in the world. And so, yeah, this is very, very catastrophic what's taking place. Wildfires growing larger. Another chart there, more acres are burning as the average fire size increases. That's what's been happening in time that um, you have more acres, more intense, they're, they're getting more severe and more widespread. And so the number of wildfires across the U.S. has decreased in recent years, but climate change has triggered larger and more intense blazes that destroy more acreage, especially in dry conditions. And that is what's going on right now. Acres burned by wildfires in the West Coast states. There you see it. Uh, off the charts there in California and uh, continuing to rage there in Oregon and Washington as well. Entire towns in California, Oregon, Washington have been completely destroyed by this year's historic wildfires, many of which are not contained. That's the concern. And it continues to be uh, uh, just a nightmare unfolding there. At least 36 have died. Um, actually, there's cumulative 18,500 firefighters fighting these uh, blazes. And a matter of fact, they say that um, the size of Connecticut, that is how much territory we're talking about that has been consumed by these raging 
fires. So five of the largest wildfires in California history are currently active. Now you remember, you remember last year, you remember what happened last year, the Paradise Fire, just Paradise just wiped out and other uh, areas as well. And so that was very cataclysmic. And now what they're saying, too late to stop it. California's future hinges on managing mega fires, according to uh, The Guardian. And this year's historic blazes and apocalyptic notice, apocalyptic skies will become routine. That's what they're forecasting. That's what they're warning is going to happen. Hope lies in rethinking how we live with fire. California's historic wildfires have served have served up astonishing scenes of destruction that have claimed several dozen lives, incinerated huge tracts of land, and caused dyspo uh, dyspomia, uh, sorry about that, dystomian, orange skies to loom over a populace choked by toxic waste. But in time, this sort of destruction and anguish suffered in 2020 may seem routine, even mild. The record scale of the flames, which have consumed an area larger than the state of Connecticut, is bringing scientists' expectations of the climate crisis into reality. Don't have time to uh, uh, read the rest of this article, but here's another one. Time Magazine, strong winds trigger Southern California wildfire to explode in size, spreads to desert floor. That's a, that, that news just came out a few hours ago. Now, there are some clear, compelling Bible prophecies that relate to the fires consuming the beautiful West. Look here, everybody. We have a motto, a motto on our channel, all right? Here's the motto. If it's in the Bible, we want it. If it's not in the Bible, we don't want it. We need to go to the Word of God. Don't believe anything Mark Fox says unless you see it backed up by the Word of God. And the Word of God gives us so many different prophecies that shed light on what's going on now, whether it be the fires or earthquakes or famines and droughts and tsunamis and tornadoes, whatever it is, these natural disasters were predicted by ancient prophecies tucked away in the Word of God. Now, I believe all of the Bible, 66 books, I believe every word proceeds from the mouth of God, Matthew 4, verse 4, and Luke 4, verse 4. And so on my channel, and by the way, I hope you subscribe, hit the bell icon so you don't miss any of our future uploads. I want to tell you something. By the way, if you click like, if you feel impressed, click like. It actually helps YouTube algorithms, so it helps us get the word out. So always remember that to click like as God impresses you. But listen, everybody, on our channel called Amazing Prophecies, our commitment to God and to you is whatever we see in current events that we feel is very timely, relevant as it relates to Bible prophecy, we're going we're gonna to come to you with it. And we believe that this is the news behind the bad news. The good news is that, well, let's put it this way. The bad news of natural disasters leads us to the good news that Jesus knew this would happen because Jesus does not guess about the future. He knows the future. So I'm saying this, go to bed tonight, wake up tomorrow. You may not recognize your world. And that is what's raging in the West. These fires are raging. Let's go to the screen. We're going to look at some prophecies really, really uh, quickly here tonight. Number one, these fires, earthquakes, famines, tsunamis, etc. These are signs of the second coming of Jesus Christ. These are ominous, powerful harbingers of the second coming of Jesus Christ, the return of Jesus Christ to take us home to heaven. According to Matthew 24, verse 7, we read, For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences like COVID-19, global pandemic that's hitting California and, and the West and so forth. But now you got the fires added to it and earthquakes in various places. And of course, uh, California is riddled with earthquakes. All these are the beginning of sorrows. And my heart goes out to those who have lost loved ones. My heart goes out to those of you who lost your home. Uh, we, we know individuals that have lost their home. And uh, if you have lost your home, I, I want to hear from you. If you have, we can pray with you. Uh, we don't have a lot of financial resources to give away, but we do know how to pray. And we have a prayer team. And so, number two, 
these are judgments of God. That is God withdrawing his protection because we live in a planet in rebellion. Now, when the judgments of God fall, sometimes good people suffer. Bad things can happen to good people. But notice what the Bible says. With my soul, I have desired you in the night. Yes, by my spirit within me, I will seek you early. Notice, even at night, our hearts should go out to God. If we wake up, Jesus is right there with us. The Bible says in Psalms 121, he neither slumbers nor sleep. He keeps the night watch, as my mother said. And that's recorded in Psalms 121. So notice, for when your judgments are in the earth, whose judgments? God's judgments. The inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. So these judgments are to be teachers. They're to teach us that we need God. They're to teach us that this life is temporary. We're just passing through. We're just pilgrims. We can't get too rooted and grounded in this life. No, we're on our way to heaven. And so, for by fire and by his sword, the Lord will judge all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. Uh, Isaiah 66, verse 16. Ultimately, this is going to be fully experienced because all of the unrighteous will be consumed by the bright return of Jesus coming and all of the righteous will go home to be with the Lord. You will be punished by the Lord of hosts with thunder and earthquake and great noise with storm and tempest and the flame of devouring fire. Isaiah 29, 6. Notice the term fire is used repeatedly in the Bible as depicting God's judgments. Matter of fact, you can do some homework and you can just type in, for example, burning Jerusalem, 24 Bible verses about the burning of Jerusalem that was fulfilled, partially fulfilled when the Babylonians destroyed Jerusalem in 605 BC, 605 years before Christ. And so, and then it was destroyed again in 70 AD and these things were predicted. Jeremiah 17, 27, this was fulfilled by King Nebuchadnezzar when King Nebuchadnezzar destroyed Jerusalem and the temple with fire. But if you will not heed me, Jeremiah writes, hallow the Sabbath day, such as not carrying a burden when entering in the gates of Jerusalem on the Sabbath day, then I will kindle a fire in its gates and it shall devour the palaces of Jerusalem and it shall not be quenched. And so that has happened. So you can type in fires of judgment, 29 Bible verses in this one website called Knowing Jesus. And so what about Sodom and Gomorrah? When I, when I think of fires, I think about how God's judgment fell on Sodom and Gomorrah because of their licentiousness, because of their immorality and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes. And historians tell us and um, archaeologists tell us and theologians tell us that Sodom and Gomorrah or were located there around the Dead Sea. And uh, so turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them to destruction, watch this, making them an example to those who afterward would live ungodly. So the day is coming when all the ungodly are going to be destroyed and delivered righteous Lot, who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked. So even Lot, he wasn't a perfect man, but he was called righteous because he was seeking to follow God. But he shouldn't have been living there in the first place. But anyway, he was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to by day, day to day, by what? What, what was oppressing him? Why was he tormented? By seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. Come on now. Is this not what we are experiencing as we see the lawless deeds of a planet in rebellion? Then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust under the punishment for the day of judgment. Notice what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah? The day of judgment happened for them. And that's a type of what's going to happen when Jesus comes. The wicked are going to be destroyed by the brightness of his return. You read that in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Jude verse 7, as Sodom and Gomorrah, and the cities around them in a similar manner to these, having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering what? The vengeance, the judgment of eternal fire. Jude verse 7. This is what's going to happen to the wicked when Jesus Christ comes again. What's going to happen? All of the wicked are not going to make it. 
They're going to be destroyed by the brightness of the Lord's coming. And all the righteous are going up, up, and away in the second coming of Jesus Christ to go home to be with the Lord. And I hope you watch my videos uh, and check out my playlist. I have playlists about these different topics of end time. And I hope you watch more of my videos upon these different topics of the second coming and the tribulation and so forth. Now notice Second Chronicles 7, 13 and 14. When I shut up heaven and there is no rain and it's been very, very dry out there in the West or command the locusts to devour the land or send pestilence among my people, COVID-19, if my people were called by my name will humble themselves. America is on fire and we must go to our knees, humble ourselves. We are smitten by the pestilence and we're smitten in the West by not enough rain to keep things um, healthy, but everything's dry like a tinderbox. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Look here, everybody. These are promises. These are promises from God's word that we can claim. If we will humble ourselves, get down on our knees. Are you spending time on your knees? Spend time in prayer. Right now, respond. Say, Jesus, help me to spend more time in prayer. Can you say that right now? Leave a comment below. Respond. These, these responses, comments will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life, I believe, because the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, is right here. He's speaking through me. He's not focusing on his word. And I'm making an appeal directed by the Holy Spirit. And I feel impressed to urge you to write down right now, what's your response thus far? Shouldn't we humble ourselves and pray? I want to encourage you right now. Comment below. Jesus, help me to spend more time in prayer. If we humble ourselves and pray in light of the fires, in light of COVID-19, in light of earthquakes, in light of hurricanes, there's hurricanes right now in the Atlantic. All right? The thing is this, is natural disasters are going to get worse, not better. Now, some might say, well, that's because of climate change. Well, the Bible makes a very clear, call it whatever you want. Natural disasters in the last days are signs of the soon return of Jesus Christ. Jesus is coming soon. Are you ready? That's what my channel is all about. It's about getting ready for the soon return of Jesus Christ. I want to hear from you. You can write to us, our address in the, in the description. Text us, email us, call us between myself and our staff, my wife and I and other staff members and so forth. We're here to serve, to help you. Yes, help you. I'm talking to you. Help you in your walk with Jesus Christ. You say, I don't need any help. Most people need a little guidance. If you're one of them, email us call us, whatever. We want to hear from you. Our phone number, 833-211-4878. All right, let's keep going. Let's go back to the screen, everyone. Okay, so the Bible makes it clear, number three, that these natural disasters are going to be worse during the tribulation because during the tribulation, there is no mercy showed for the wicked. Right now, there's, there's mercy shown to both the wicked and the righteous. But during the tribulation, mercy is only for the righteous. Look at what the Bible says. This is Daniel 12, verse 1. At that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble, tribulation, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered, everyone who is found written in the, in the book. Notice, only the righteous are delivered. If you give your heart to Jesus, your name is written in the book and you'll be spared from being lost eternally. Now, some righteous will die during the tribulation. We know that. We know some will die. But God will be with us during the tribulation. I have videos on this subject of the tribulation. And so the time of trouble, it's coming. It's coming. In Revelation 7, 1 to 3, look what God's up to. What is God wanting to do now? Seal his people so they don't get the mark of the beast. 
And after these things, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth. There's the four points of the compass. Holding the four winds of the earth, it's global, that the wind should not blow on the earth or on the sea or on any tree. Then I saw another angel sending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God where? On their foreheads. Look here. What does it mean? Look here, everybody. What does it mean? What does it mean to be sealed? Notice here, seal the servants of a God on their foreheads. What's there on the forehead? This is not talking about literally on. It's symbolic about what's in the forehead, the brain, the frontal lobe function of the brain. What happens with the frontal lobe function of the brain? That's where we make decisions. That's where that's where our memory is. That's where we make decisions and judgment and discernment. Our decision making right there is the headquarters, frontal lobe function. And so you don't get the seal of God by accident. You choose. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua 24 and verse 15. We choose to follow the word of God. We choose to follow his promises. We choose to keep his commandments. We choose to trust, trust in Jesus as Lord and Savior. Go ahead, type in now, I choose Jesus. You're not saved accidentally. You're saved because you decided to give your heart to Jesus, trust in Jesus Christ. All right, we've got to keep going. Let's keep going, everybody. So, number four, earth is destroyed by the fire return of Jesus Christ. That's right. Look at what the Bible says. But the heavens and the earth which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for what? For fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. 2 Peter 3, verse 7. 2 Peter 3, verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. It's talking about the second coming of Christ, in which the heavens will pass away with great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Number five. This earth is not our home yet. It's not our home yet. We're pilgrims. But now they desire a better, that is, a heavenly country. You know, some of you are wanting to leave California because of the fires and earthquakes. I can understand that. But the good news is there's a heavenly country where we're going to. It's not going to be any natural disasters in that heavenly country in heaven. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. For he has prepared a city for them. Hallelujah. The New Jerusalem, Hebrews 11, verse 16. Number six, no suffering in heaven. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for husband. Now this happens after the millennium, according to Revelation 20. And I have a subject coming up, a video coming up soon on the millennium as God leads. But... Uh, this millennium, by the way, that's one of my topics I'll be preaching in Sandpoint, Idaho from October 9 to October 31. I hope you can come. I want to meet you in person. Then I, John, so this new Jerusalem descends with the righteous in it after the thousand years. And then as it descends down here on this planet, then God destroys the wicked fully and completely and the righteous inherit the earth made new. And behold, a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle that is the dwelling of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no more funerals, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain for the former things have passed away. I don't know what your pain is, but soon there'll be no more pain. Physical pain, emotional pain, spiritual pain, no more. Friends, do you know the Bible says in the book of Jude, verse 23, it says that as Christians, we are to help pull people out of the fire, the fire of sin and the fire of ultimately being cast into the lake of fire, as it says in the book of Revelation. We can save people. And that's what my channel is all about. It's about pulling people out of the fire. I want to hear from you. Email me, amazingprophecies at gmail.com. I want to hear from you. 
whether you're from Africa, Australia, UK, India, Philippines, wherever you're from, I want to hear from you. And if you're here in the United States, you can call us, 833-211-4878. Or you can email us. I want to hear from you. We'll help you find a Sabbath-keeping church. I want to help you find a Sabbath-keeping church that's preaching what we are on our channel in your area. Thousands of you have asked me what church I recommend. Literally, I think it's over 7,000 of you have already asked, and we, we know every day more requests. Hey, find me a church. Hey, find me a church that keeps the Sabbath. Hey, I want to be baptized. And if you want to be baptized, we can help to arrange that as well and prepare you for that. I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you. So look here, everybody. I want to tell you something. Jesus has been with us right now in this broadcast. Jesus Christ led you to this broadcast, to this video. And he wants you to make decisions. It's not enough to just go in the physical ear. It must go down to the heart. It must lead us to take the word of God and to love his word, cherish his word, memorize his word, think about his word, have a prayer journal. And then that prayer journal, write down your prayer requests and write down answers to prayer. Write down different scriptures the Lord shows you. I urge you, keep a prayer journal. It'll help you to be stronger in the Lord. Spend time in secret prayer. Spend time singing hymns and then praising God with beautiful sacred hymns. Um, and I'm here to tell you, if you want to get close to the Lord, one of the, one of the greatest ways you can get close to the Lord is honoring the Bible Sabbath the Lord's Day. Revelation 1.10 talks about, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. And we have videos on the subject of the Sabbath. I hope you will check it out. And if you want some handouts and more information on this, we can help you. We can accommodate you. Thousands of you have received a handout that we have 50 things to do on the Sabbath. Because the Sabbath, matter of fact, we just finished the Sabbath here. It's Saturday night here. We had a wonderful Sabbath, a good fellowship and so forth. Uh, because we're here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And we were able to go to church today. What a blessing it is. A couple people were baptized. And so I repeat again, I'm coming to Idaho and also to Washington. I want to do some type of event there in Washington. I want to meet you. Some of you might fly in. Some of you um, might be able to drive a great distance, but we're going to be there October 9 to October 31st, and I'll be preaching almost every single night. Uh, we're going to be off on Monday night and Wednesday night. So for three weeks, I'm preaching every single night except Monday night and Wednesday night. And you'll hear more about this announcement and uh, you can receive an email about it and text about it and so forth. We plan to get thousands of thousands of emails out and thousands of thousands texts out. So hopefully you will be alerted that uh, that we have this exciting opportunity to learn Bible prophecy in person. We want to meet you guys in person. And so I want to pray with you right now. Father in heaven, I thank you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That yes, we see the devastation of the West and at different parts of the world, whether it be through floods, the COVID pandemic, earthquakes, mudslides. Oh Lord, we want to we wanna go to heaven. We're homesick for heaven, but in the meantime, help us to win souls. Lord, I pray that, that you would guide and direct my listeners, my viewers, and all of our subscribers. I pray, dear Lord, that at this time we would all be fully surrendered to Jesus and always asking, Lord, what can I do to win souls? In Jesus' name, amen. One of the things you can do to win souls is partner with us, stand with us. Whether it's $10 a month or $1,000 a month or 10,000, whatever, we need to expand. We are literally reaching millions of people. We have a school of evangelism in the Philippines that's really growing, having an impact. They're holding crusades. There's been many baptisms, and, it, and we're expecting many, many, many more crusades, more baptisms. We need your help to help support our School of Evangelism in the Philippines. We also do live events like we're doing there in Idaho. And, uh, 
And our, our goal is, as this pandemic calms down a little bit, we're planning to travel more and more and to try to meet you, whether you're in Cincinnati, Ohio, or Miami, Florida, or San Antonio, Texas, or San Diego, wherever you are, San Diego, or Boston, we want to meet you because uh, we believe that God leads us together for a divine purpose. And so if you can stand with us, we do appreciate that very much. So this is Mark Fox signing off for now. Remember, all of the bad news is a reminder of the good news that Jesus Christ is coming soon for you.